Welcome to Rent Sale Review. Uh, today is going to be a kind of like a little quick show. This is um, actually a, this started from when I made a TikTok video about uh, not really being a huge fan of Don Dockin. And he still uh, isn't. And I'm still not. <laughs> <laughs> Although we don't know yet. I say we'll save it till after we talk about these albums. But um, so I, I, I said to people on there, you know what? Let me uh, give me some albums that you like of Don Dockin and I will um, review them. So uh, I got a few replies or whatever, uh, not as much as I hoped. So I just yesterday I said, you know what? Let me just listen to the two albums that people mostly talk about uh, Tooth and Nail and mm. Under Lock and Key. Yeah, that's about accurate. Yeah. So I said, all right, let me listen to them. And uh, I did that while I was at work yesterday. And uh, my good pal Lou Mavs, who was also on my regular or on Rat Salad Review, what the hell am I talking about? No, it's your show for all intents and purposes. <laughs> I'm. I'm the uh, third to last noob on the show. That is true. I can't I, I'm say. after the two original and after two recent rejects we got. Hi, Manny and James. How you doing? <laughs> James is uh, uh, James is all right. James is okay. James. Actually, I hope James is okay because uh, he's uh, away on us uh, assignment right now. Ah, uh, yes, yes. In one of our favorite places, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> We're breaking kayfabe. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter where he is, but uh, he doesn't like it too much, which is funny. Which is hilarious because I actually just right after he said, I hate Pennsylvania. Yeah, I'm sorry, Pennsylvania. He said that. Yeah. And I said, gee, that's funny. I just booked a vacation for my family and I had to go to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and he's like, why do all the New Yorkers go to Pennsylvania for vacation? Because it's kid friendly. Yeah, but we have much. kids. And the kids love to see the Amish and then a horse buggy is going down the street and everything. So it's, you know, it's pretty cool. And they don't do uh, what do they call it? Um, what's the thing that Amish people are always like guilty for? But that you know, that with 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 the with the dogs, they uh, apparently they say oh, that uh, kennel. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the dog. Um, I know what you're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. I I've seen them interact with the dogs on their land, and let me tell you, they are kind and loving to their animals. Okay, leave the Amish alone. <laughs> Hey, uh, pu puppy mills puppy, puppy mills. mills right yeah. right right i i i was looking for puppy mills in lancaster i did not find one yeah so you know probably man. more puppy mills in suffolk county than there are in uh <laughs> lancaster pennsylvania so fuck y'all haters anyways most, most likely but um <laughs> uh if you didn't see my tiktok video i'm gonna show it right now so uh this is what i did you mean this shitty band <laughs> Who wrote this shitty song? Even Don Dawkins' own guitar strings did not want to be part of that video or song. And this shitty song? Into the fire! This band that sucks so much that I bought this record at a yard sale today, so no one else has to listen to it. I'm going to throw it away in the garbage. I don't like docking. All right. Uh, so that's what I did. And now that I'm was make beautiful, it up. Wayne. It was, right? So mm -hmm. now I'm going to make it up to everybody. And um, here we go. Tooth and Nail. And Lou, actually, you're a, a huge fan of docking. I love this album. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, if I were to go through the... Uh, my favorite Doc and Alms, I would say uh, Tooth and Nail, number one. Uh, number two, Back for the Attack. Number three, Under Lock and Key. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think those, if, if you're going to get three Doc and Albums, those are three you, you should definitely get in your collection. Uh, Tooth and Nail is actually not just my favorite Doc and Album. I would even put it as one of my 10 favorite albums of all time. Really? The, there's just something about the ferocity of George Lynch's guitar. The songwriting, the melodicism, you know, it's a killer record. And uh, it was, I mean, I heard Breaking the Chains first, mm. but, uh, you know, then when my brother got this cassette, I was like, oh, I, I like this better. Yeah. So I should have listened to that other album too. I forgot about that one. But what, we're getting the chain. Yeah. We're, we're doing these two. So next time, if we ever do another docking show, that, that album will definitely be in there. That might deserve a screen from the grave because no one ever really talks about that album. All right. So, so yeah, that would be a good idea then. We'll do that. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. So, Tooth and Nail, uh, the actual song, uh, re reminds me a bit of uh, Judas Priest Free Will Burning. 
just not as good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to throw the jab in there, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I had to throw that jab in there. Um, just got lucky. Uh, that one's just too AOR for me. Uh, also, the course just it doesn't do anything for me. It just uh, and that's what I find a lot about this Tooth and Nail album. The the uh, lyric uh, content on this thing it, it's just not as put together as I would have hoped it would have been. Uh, musically, it's cool. There's some cool stuff in there, but the lyrics uh, I don't know. They just well it wasn't underdeveloped. Like he was I guess writing. I mean, it's not like he was writing about, like, you know, Jawbreaker and, uh, you know, the Sentinel and, uh, you know, uh, the Hellion Electric Eye. You know, it's, it, Don Dokken is not a lyricist no. uh, in, in the vein of Rob Halford. I mean, you know, uh, believe it or not, even though he's from L.A. originally, he cut his teeth in Germany, try, mm. you know, with a record deal there. So believe it or not, he was he had more in common with Accept than okay. he did with uh, the Los Angeles musician community at the mm. time. I, I, one, I think you know, on his original demo, uh, Peter Baltus, uh, the bassist of Accept, mm. was the bassist on that record. And Michael Wagner, who was a founding member of, of Accept, did a lot of production work with, uh, with Dawkins. So th- there is that tie there. So I guess if you take that into account... You know, I don't know the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, but but you know, it wasn't like Judas Priest style stuff. Music wise, yes, lyrics, right. lyric wise, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, you can tell this is like this is the debut album. So, yeah, I no tell, breaking the chains was the oh, debut. Breaking the chains. All right, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not. A, see, this is why I'm not a huge Dokken fan, and I hate that my camera keeps moving. Your camera has anxiety right now. It's wobbling back and forth. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I I, wow. So if that's oh, I I can't wait till we get to that one then. (laughs) (laughs) All right, official. Next screams from the grave is breaking the chain. What did you think of the uh, intro song uh, without warning? Or did you think that was actually the beginning of the song tooth and nail? I did actually think that was the beginning. Okay. Tooth and nail. (laughs) <laughs> well it, it was their intro music for many years too so oh was it all right yeah yeah so I, they would start their shows at tooth and nail uh, okay well you know what i listened to it on my phone and why i was working so i didn't really sit there and look at the the playlist or the track listing got it so i did not realize that that was the uh intro but uh, mm-hmm. it was all right it, you know it wasn't nothing like oh my god i gotta go listen to that again i listened to it i love i love that track there's so many better intros to a song <laughs> all right, all right yeah. once again you're drawing the priest comparison it's not everything could be that no hell not, not even not even become not even comparing the priest uh, just uh, anybody <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, anybody. Any, anybody anybody we're gonna but... get so much hate for this episode i swear <laughs> to god no yeah, you might be surprised um heartless heart did nothing for me couldn't stand the repetitiveness of him saying heartless heart over and over again enough <sighs> Again, you know, I think if you had discovered this earlier on in your life, you may feel differently about it. No. I say that because this came out before a lot of bands went repetitive. What year was this? 80... 85. Yeah. No, 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 no. To the Nail was 84. Under Lock and okay. Key was 85. Um, what was I listening to around 84? In 84, you were probably <laughs> listening to John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. But I'm just most saying. Most likely, most likely. But I, I, my first, like we discussed this on our other shows. Uh, my first band was Def Leppard. So if it wasn't as good as Def Leppard, I wouldn't like this. No, oh, let's face facts. Most things are not as good as Def Leppard back in the day. I right. mean, come on, I and Dry Power Mania. So right. So uh, there's no way. I and that. hysteria for all intents and purposes. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with hysteria. No, I love hysteria. I don't care what anyone says. Me I love Crazy Nights from Kiss too. So man, no, I, I had good album. It's too bad, Ralph Vieira. We like it. I love uh, Ralph. I disagree with him, but that's okay because he agrees with me that I like crazy nights. All right. Uh don't close your eyes. I like okay. the, I like the guitar work of this one, but the actual song I don't really like. Uh I like when the chorus uh, they have a little more involved than than just saying the title as the you know the last song did. But um the, the, the guitar work was the favorite part. He did a little bit more things on this, it was a little bit more inventive, I guess. It was, and, and that's, you know, I, I have to admit, as much as I respect the rhythm section, uh, Mick Brown and Jeff Pilsen, who Mick Brown is now retired and Jeff Pilsen's in Foreigner, so you know he's getting a good payday. Mm. But, you know, Lynch's riffs and songwriting is really what made 
the band, I think, in my opinion, especially from from a guitar player's perspective, I mean, if Lynch didn't write those riffs, I don't think I would have considered myself a Dokken fan. The, to me, that and and I know a lot of other people feel that way too. There's aside from, and I made this point in the past before. Aside from Randy Rhodes and Eddie Van Halen, who I would say are the two guitar players from California that influenced uh, the most musicians. Um, the other three that I have to give that respect to, I would say Jakey Lee, because people talk about him more now than they did than he, when he was with Ozzy. Mm-hmm. Warren D. Martini of Rat, who, again, a great guitarist and a great songwriter, and George Lynch. So, you know, it, to me, I wouldn't say he was the driving force, but I would say that he is what made fans of music at the time Dokken fans because he wrote right. killer riffs mm-hmm. and he was a great player yeah he is definitely the 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 standout person on this album oh yeah definitely. his he's never replicated that tone on any album after no. i think that's the best he ever sounded so mm-hmm. just my opinion yeah but uh don doc and I, I his vocals i i'm some of them are okay he's a little too weak for me i think he needs a, he need a little bit more power in his voice. Uh, well, I mean, that's just how he sings, I guess. Right. I mean, he comes from the Paul Rogers school, you know. He's so. not a terrible singer. I don't, I don't like, you know, I'm not going to listen to him singing, but um, it's just, I don't know. I, I like different singers. Understandable. It's He's just, not Michael Kiske. I got it. No, not at all. Uh, where, what was that song? So that was uh, Don't Close, Don't your, close eyes, your Eyes. Right? Next one after that is uh, uh, When Heaven Comes Down. When Heaven Comes Down. Funny. When uh, this started, I thought it sounded like uh, Alice Cooper's song, The Last Temptation. So I know where that might have come from. Well, that was years. Yeah, that was recorded years after. But I'm saying that's maybe Alice Cooper stole it. From oh, yeah, that, that is possible. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, another killer riff and a great solo from uh, from George. So. You know, I, I, and and I, I have to give it up to uh, John Levin, the guitarist who is in Dokken right now. You know, he he plays the solos live now more like Lynch than Lynch would play them now. Mm. So, you know, I, I have to give him uh, credit. But again, what Lynch did on these songs, in my opinion, eh, it's it's magic. So, but yeah, I, I like this song. It's got a darker tone to it and it's a lot more groovy than the other songs were. Um, one thing I did forget to mention on the, the uh, beginning of this video is uh, if you watch that TikTok thing, I did, I, I didn't purposely uh, confuse Doc and, and George Lynch. I know they're two separate people, but I ended up recording that video and in my head, I just made them both the same. So I know there's two different people. Uh, <laughs> Into the Fire. This one I actually heard, heard like about 100 times because everybody that replied to that uh, TikTok video. I had to keep hearing that song playing over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it's actually catchy. I do like it. But when I actually got to hear the whole entire song, it's it's all chorus. There's not, nothing else to that song. And he says, uh, yeah, I mean, I can see that <laughs> it, it, it's weird, though. Like the, the verses are minimal. The, the choruses seem to come before the pre-chorus. You know, yeah, it's, it's just it, like. And, and then he says into the fire, like maybe two or three different ways. And it's just <laughs> into the fire over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> but it got them a lot of views on MTV. So something worked. Yes. So. That, yeah, of course. And like you said earlier, I mean, that's what they did in the 80s. So, yeah, you know, it, it is a cool song and I can deal with it. Whatever. It's not not bad. Now, now it's in my head every freaking day. I can deal with it. Um, bullets to spare. I might not have any left about time this album is done. <laughs> That's a bit of a dunderhead song, but yeah. I mean, I like it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't care for that one. Let, listen, if Kiss could get away with Lick It Up, I, I, we could give Doc in a pass for this song. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Lick It Up. I that's it. the worst song on the album, and I think that's one of their best albums. Really? Well, that's... I love Lick It Up. Oh, my God. I'm not going to say Vinnie Vincent saved Kiss, but I will say he's a good songwriter. Retail Review might have its first drug test. <laughs> it's just an opinion, goddamn. <laughs> I never gave you shit for not liking Dokken. I know. Yeah, you did. 
Uh, I did not. That's a lie. That is um, a lie. Only half a that TikTok. That is a did. lie. <laughs> that is a Nancy Pelosi level lie. And yes, I could say it because we don't have James and Manny on the show today. So fuck it. <laughs> All right, you didn't, but only like half a TikTok did. So yeah, well, there we go. Uh, alone again. This is the best song on the album. Really, you're giving it to the power ballad. I am, and I'm not a huge power ballad fan, but I think this is the best one. This to me uh, seemed like it was very. Um, thought out uh and it had a meaning to it musically and lyrically and it just really well put together ballad mm-hmm. you know it's funny i was drawing the uh the the comparison before with with priest and uh and uh and and, and doc and, and apparently there was an interview where george lynch did say that he uh ripped off rock hard right free for the riff for into the fire i oh, i okay. forgot to mention that really? um as far as alone again, no, it's probably have to say uh, the best power ballad that they ever did. Um, it's not my favorite song on the record. I'd actually have to give that to the title track. So, oh really? Okay, I'll let you have it. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, the final song, "Turn on the Action." I like this one as well. Total air guitar uh, stuff going on there and uh i like the cool alex van halen type drum beat going on so i think that song is a pretty good ending for the album it is it is decent song. and and uh you know i i'll tell you this this album definitely got them out of the uh the red with electro records hmm. but it's not until the next one where you know they were becoming well they became much bigger with the next album right. but the crazy thing is that and I looked I looked this up on setlist.fm as as mu- as much as Dokken was a multi-platinum act in the 80s, they never headlined an arena show I, ever. A lot of people said that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. They opened up or were direct support for headline acts in arenas. But it seemed to be like that was that was it yeah, <laughs> as far yeah. as their arena status. Yeah. Well, I, I can see that with Tooth and Nail because I don't think that's a really great album. With the amount of uh, things that I see people say about it, I just don't get it. It's not for me. Well, I, timeline is everything. Like I heard it in 1984, 85 when I was four or five years old because my my older my older brother Mikey, God rest his soul, was a Dawkins fan and he bought it and that was something that he always played in his Camaro before car seats were invented for kids uh, <laughs> repeatedly. So. Yeah. Yeah, at least I didn't say a track. <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah, no, I do understand. Sometimes when you hear, you know, one album, like the first album that you hear from any band, I mean, that's most of the time, that's your favorite album, you know? And uh, I can understand that with this one. But for me, no, especially at this point in time, I, I don't like it. But then, you know, what? it's weird because even saying that, depending on what time period you hear it in, I can listen. I, I didn't get into Thin Lizzy that long ago. Mm-hmm. And I liked it instantly. I mean, I always knew Boys in Back of Town, but that was about it. You know, and then when I heard the other songs, I'm like, what the hell? I how did I miss all this stuff. You know, it's even older. Yeah, same here. I mean, I only knew the boys are back in town and I knew Jailbreak because it was on the Detroit Rock City soundtrack. Yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't until I went to Ireland in 2005 with uh, my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife. Uh, we were at a pub drinking with some of the locals. And the following month is when they unleashed the uh, Phil Linnet statue in uh, mm. Dublin. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I'm having drinks with the locals and, you know, we're talking music and they were praising Phil Linnet and then Lizzie and, you know, just saying, you know, uh, the, the, he was a god among men and things like that. And, you know, who's the only Irish band I really knew of at the time was probably you too. Yeah. And well, uh, the the, the punters Wumba. the punters were pretty much trouble wumba oh they from ireland <laughs> i don't know what no i think they're from the uk um oh, really. but you know uh the punters at the bar were like bono fuck him you yanks can keep him <laughs> and uh you know right when i left ireland i found uh thin lizzie's greatest hits which was a, a, a double disc hmm. in the airport in dublin airport <laughs> So I picked it up and I listened to it the whole way home. And after that, I went out and got everything Lizzie album. So, you know. yeah, 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 that shit's good. But like I said, you know, like I know it, under, it, it depends on when you hear the albums, but just certain bands just like will click with you no matter from when they're from. Mm-hmm. Dokken just hasn't done it for me until 
Under Lock and Key. No. Oh. Unchain the Night starts off right away. I'm like, this is this is what I want. I would hope for them to sound like. You know, I, I'd love how this started out. It's a lot slower than the previous album, which I noticed right away. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, it's uh, they, right, you can tell that they matured a lot on this album, even with the songwriting too. Uh, and, and it's a lot catchier than pretty much any song to me on Tooth and Nail. Unchained the Night is a very catchy song. And um, it, it's funny how around this time, like with the re- from the, the tour with Tooth and Nail up until this point, this is when it started getting spun in the media that Don Dockin and George Lynch despised each other. <laughs> and, and apparently this was, I don't know if it was just something written by their publicists to get them more publicity or if they genuinely hated each other then. Mm-hmm. But um, for, I heard a rumor supposedly that um, Don would go into the studio at night to record this way. George could record his guitar parts during the day so they didn't have to run into each other. See, so that worked. <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean, this is for all intents and purposes, their most successful album. And, mm-hmm. you know, to, to start off with a song like Unchained the Night, you could see why. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's a good song. I would actually put it on a playlist. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Playlist. Yep. But and, the, the rest of the album convert in. Let's find out. And again, The Hunter. I will also put that on the playlist because I thought that song was just as good as the other one. Do you hear that, Elizabeth? <laughs> I'm coming to join you, honey. Oh my goodness! Uh, so I, you know, I, I the, the TikTok video I made. Yes, it was a joke. I, I don't hate uh, Dokken or George Lynch or anybody, and yeah, I don't really care for Tooth and Nail, but there are some good songs. So here's two, <laughs> which is not on that album, but the following. So right. So what what do you think about the Hunter? Oh, killer, killer riff. Um, yeah, I have to admit, at, at this point, the lyrical content, you know, I'm the hunter looking for love and all that stuff. Uh, you know, what five year old could really relate to that? Right. So uh, I I have to willingly admit that I, I tuned the lyrics out and still do to this day. <laughs> yeah, the, the lyrics are great. The, the music's great. And, and, and the way the, the vocal melodies are phrased is it, it works very well. Yeah, so. definitely. Uh, in my dreams, uh, I've heard this song a bunch of times. It was always on the radio or somewhere, um, uh, but I never realized it was Dokken. Uh I like this one as well. Just Who'd you think it was? Songs. I have no idea. It never. They never said it on the radio. Ario Speedwagon. No. no, no clue. But the the third song I like now. Uh, wow. Okay. And and the funny thing I hear, there's a lot of um, influences that Ghost has taken from. I don't know if it's just this one song in general. But I don't know if you notice, like when uh, Don Dawkins sings like those ahs and stuff, I, I hear Tobias from from Ghost doing that. I don't think Ghost directly lifted that from Dawkins. No, no, no. But stole the idea. I mean, he's not going to, you know. Well, I, it works. It does. So. I mean, I know other bands do it, too. But I, when I heard this, I, I immediately thought, oh, my God, it sounds like something. How? Because it's almost exactly how Tobias la- layers him doing that you know what i'm saying yeah it's almost pretty much identical well i mean look uh ghost is a band that didn't design themselves for top 40 but top 40 went directly to them Mm. you know what i mean doc on the other hand was designed to be a hard rock metal band whatever you want to call i don't call it hair metal either i fucking hate that term um who were designing their songs to be formulated for top 40 because you know you're on a major label you need to sell gold minimum or a million copies and then the next album has to do better than the one before you know so they were under pressure to well write a hit and for all intents and purposes not intensive purposes people intents and purposes um sorry just the, the grammar schmuck in me is coming out um <laughs> in my dreams it was a bigger hit than alone again or just got lucky so it worked yeah yeah but uh i could definitely hear ghost covering this song it's a total ghost song i can hear you no know, that would be cool yo tobias if you're watching this give us a little cut thank you yeah give it a listen i, I can definitely hear ghost doing it uh slipping away yeah uh, I started to do that as he well. He slipped away right after he heard this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, this is not as good as the other ballad from the other album at all. No, Pretty no, close. it wasn't. Not even close. I, uh, I enjoyed it, but it's a bit too saccharine for me. Yeah, it's very... Um, yeah, nothing just flo- the lyrics don't flow with the music. It's just not as good as the other one. Yeah. Uh Lightning Strikes Again. Ah. This is This all... is my favorite song on the album. Really? Oh yeah. Um I hear a lot of Dio uh stand up and shout in this, especially lyrically. It's almost sang the same exact way. You know the uh, <laughs> There's an odd parallel I'm going to make to Ozzy's The Ultimate Sin record. Mm-hmm. Um there's a song on there called Lightning Strikes written by Jakey Lee. Mm. Both songs are in F sharp, although Ozzy, uh, for that album, um, Jake tuned his guitar down a half step. But the riffs are kind of identical if you play them back to back. And what I'll do is I'll make a short of both videos, both songs, and you'll hear it for yourself. I just thought it was funny that lightning strikes uh, two words in both songs and the riff is kind of identical, just played at different tempos. Mm. I wonder, I wonder plenty of things, but I, I wonder if, you know, cause I know George and Jake were buddy, buddy. And I, and George was supposed to be the guitarist in Ozzy's band before Jake took it over. Oh, really? So I, oh, that's I right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. you know, a lot of coincidences there, but you know, I, I, I could just be looking too much into it as I always do. Cause I'm a music geek, you know? Yeah. What was that? Do you think that song was written around the same time? Well, ultimate sin came out a year after, uh, under lock and key did. Oh, okay. So mm-hmm. I'm just saying that there's parallels there to be drawn. Definitely. I would say so um it's not love another song i remember hearing when i was younger and just never liked it then and i don't like it now actually i think that was in um was that in one of the um what do you call it the uh, nightmare on elm street films no the, a video game um uh vice vice city what, what the hell what uh, um grand theft auto oh uh, it I, might have I, been in grand theft auto it's might have been where i heard it. i don't think it was that one i thought it was breaking the chains it could have been i don't know I know I've heard it before and I didn't like never it. played Grand Theft Auto, so mm. uh Jaded Heart. This song's a bit better, but again, I can't think of who it is, but it sounds like another ripoff of somebody else. Maybe like Boston or Kansas or something. <laughs> Just not as good. Um I could take this track or leave it. I mean, yeah. you know, it was it wasn't one of the standout tracks for me. I didn't hate it, but you know, didn't really do much for me like the other ones did. Yeah. Uh, don't lie to me. Uh, again, this one, it sounds really gone downhill since that ballad. Well, we do have two songs left. We do have two songs left. Will the sun rise? This song kind of brought the album finally back up a bit. Yes. Uh, it brought up the album a lot more. Uh, I like this one a lot more. Uh, and I think the, this is probably my favorite guitar solo on the album. Yeah, it's it's a killer tune. And and and. The funny thing is, this is where Dawkins really starts to get topical. I would say that this song and Kiss of Death on Back for the Attack is where they get the most topical. Hmm. Uh, Kiss of Death is about AIDS, Um, especially in 1987, where nobody was talking about it. Hmm. And uh, this song was about the threat of nuclear war at the time between United States and Russia. Okay. please, let's make sure it doesn't happen again. (laughs) <laughs> well that's a different show uh yeah. till the living end whatever happens to the right opinion <laughs> i don't he's on t- uh twitter so i don't know oh okay this doesn't have time uh till the living end it's just not as good it's just wait hold on oh it's just not uh, a as good version of turn on the action i, th- I think it's very similar to turn on the action i agree a with similar that. feel and it's just not as good as that song it is, but I, I would say it's probably faster. It's definitely definitely their faster, thra- yeah. probably their their second thrashiest song. I, I say thrash loosely, but I mean, you know, it, for all, it's it's pretty thrashy for Dokken. Yeah. 
Right. And especially considering that tooth and nail, I would probably say was their more, it, it was their fastest song. So, you know, um, I'm not saying it's as good as a song Tooth and Nail, but I would say that it was, you know, heavy and fast, right, like right. more so than their other material. So. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't think it ended on a good note on this album, as opposed to the other, which was funny because the last album I liked the ending more than this one, and I liked the first half of this album than I liked the other album. Would you have rather they ended the album with like let's say lightning strikes or uh, will the sunrise? Yeah, why not? Probably would have been better finishers, yeah. Yeah, I think so. But uh, yeah, maybe even a, a, if they switched up maybe the song order a little bit, I, I don't know. Because maybe divide up some of the songs that I thought were better and kind of mix them in there. Maybe it would have, I don't know. I don't know. That's just me. Well, anyways, Wayne is a man, I liked. Of, his, what? Is a man of his word and just listened to two Dokken albums reluctantly and gave you his honest opinion about it and found something good in them. And now well, I'm going to take a Phillips screwdriver and jab it very hard into my ear. <laughs> got one right here for you. <laughs> oh, that's too short. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I had to do it. And I, I told everybody I would. And we, like we discussed uh, earlier, we will do another album. We'll do the first, the, the debut album. So um, screams from the grave and screams from the grave and yeah yeah i'm still alive so Dawkins not that bad and there are a couple of songs that i would add to a playlist if i ever had to and um yeah i'm still not taking back what i said <laughs> not a Dawkins fan that's okay i still am and i still hold true to the fact that i think uh tooth and nail is one of the what's it's one of my 10 favorite albums ever and you know I love it. I, I could still listen to it today from start to finish. And uh, yeah, you know, even though I did, I agree with you that Heartless Heart is repetitive. Mm. Uh, Bullets of Spare is kind of dunderhead ish. But and and Into the Fire is quite repetitive. But still, I love the <laughs> album. I don't care what anyone says. Into the Fire is cool. Though. I mean, it has a cool chorus. I just wish they would have thought of some other words to throw in every size into the fire. <laughs> Over and over and over again. Again, they, I guess they were trying to just write anthems for people to raise their fists and bang their head and sing to. I mean, you know, it's a better song than Come On, Feel the Noise. Sorry. There, I said it. I don't like that either. I don't like I, that I, I know. It's not even really a... It wasn't written by Quiet Riot. It was just nope. made popular by them. Nope. I've heard a lot of bands cover that song and I, I don't get it. What? Come On, Feel the Noise? Yeah. Uh, anywho i can i can do without that song that band <laughs> still love metal health so uh but yeah that's it and um so i don't know i don't know what you want me to do people that's it i listened to docking i'm done <laughs> stop forcing him to listen to bands he doesn't like won't someone please think of the children ah, he's been rocking with docking enough it's enough people <laughs> But I, I warn you now, there's going to be a lot more bands that I don't like. Okay? A lot more. Are you saying we're going to do music Wayne Noon doesn't like? I, that might be coming up pretty soon. And I'm about to do one on something that probably have everybody unfollow me. <laughs> Slipknot? No, no, no. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, let me guess. If I guess it, you're still not going to say what it is, though, right? No, I'm not going to reveal that here because I may not do it, but I'm thinking of doing it. I'm not going to do nothing too bad. Just I saw something yesterday and I'm like, oh, I don't need more to hear more of this. All right. Well, he'll it's tell me metal. after the show, but I'm not going to snitch. It's definitely not metal. So, uh, but it's it's somebody that everybody apparently loves and I must be the only one who's insane. Oh, dear Lord. I'd hate to ask. Yeah, I'll tell you later. Okay, for, cool. For now, that's it. That's my doc and review. Lou, thank you very much for joining me. The Doc and Thank expert. you for having me. The Doc and Expert. No. <laughs> no. Just, 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 just the fan who did not get offended by the fact that Wayne said he didn't like it. Yeah, yeah. don't take offense to anything. Uh, you're everybody's allowed to like what they like. See, and uh, I, even though I think Lou's crazy for liking Tooth and Nail, it's okay. We're still friends. I think you're crazy <laughs> for liking Chameleon, but I like that album I now Chameleon. too. So. I, I love the Elder. I, I mean, I love a lot of shitty albums, and I'm not afraid to admit it. So it is what it is. And you're allowed to like your shitty albums too. And we'll still be friends. 
That's right. And I actually made friends recently on TikTok because uh, I did another 10 of my favorite guitarist videos. Mm. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm getting people asking me, how come you don't have Dwayne Allman and Dickie Betts on there? Where's Jeff Peck? Where's Jimmy Page? Where's Randy Rhodes and Eddie Van Halen? I'm like, watch my first video. You'll find Eddie and Randy there. <laughs> But it's funny. People don't understand. It's your list. Yeah. And actually, Wayne, I do want to promote one show that I'm editing right now. Um, I just interviewed Michael Brandvold of Three Sides of the Coin. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah, and uh, that'll be I'm going to start editing that one after I wrap up my episode with Lloyd Kaufman from Trauma. But uh, let me tell you, Mike and I had a great conversation about, you know, his career in marketing and podcasting. And like our opinions on Kiss. And, you know, there were a lot of things that we agreed on. There were a lot of things we disagreed on. Um, but it was civil. There was great discourse. And, you know, um, and that's really what it should be about. You know, we're, we're united by our love for Kiss, but we're not divided by our uh, feelings or opinions on them. Right. Exactly. You know? So uh, yeah, there's always those people that, are, you know, you don't like this album. You don't like this song. Uh, you know, it's... I, it's impossible to like every album and every song by every band. And if you do, that's cool. That's that's you. But it just doesn't happen for me. Yeah. You know what, Wayne? I, I'm I'm going to throw some uh, shade off you right now. I'm going to flat out say it. What? I love the band Tesla. You couldn't pay me to go see them live right now because Jeff Keith sounds not good. Yeah. OK, and things. if the singer is supposed to carry the tune for the band, I'll carry my luggage elsewhere. I'm sorry. There, I love it. I love Tesla's music, but I, I, you couldn't pay me to go see them live now. I'm sorry. Now, what if they no. replaced him with a different singer? Would you accept that? I'm not one of those people that think that if a member leaves, a band should break up. Hmm. Um, and I have nothing against Jeff Keith as a musician, as a songwriter, or as a singer, but it. There's a difference between going to see a concert that's music to your ears and the difference between going to see a concert where it sounds like sawdust getting rubbed <laughs> on a uh, on a steel floor, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and, and and I'm sorry. Again, I, I, I love Tesla, but no, I wouldn't go see them in concert right now. So yeah. Yeah, neither would I. I don't like them. So, oh. oh. I was just trying to take some shade <laughs> off you. <clears throat> no, I don't like them either. You put but it back on yourself. That's not the band I will be talking about. Maybe. But uh, again, thank you very much for watching this. And um, I don't know. Uh, ask me about other bands. I, if I like them or not. And I'll tell you if I do or not. All right. Hit subscribe. Right side review dot com. Uh, music is life. Is it music is life? You never update it anymore. So I don't know. I, 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 no, I, I Bob Mango and I are uh, creating a new website, but you can check out my link tree. And thank you. I finally reached a thousand views on two different videos uh, uh, with Helen Cullen, uh, Phil of Def Leppard's wife. So thank you for that. Very good. She surpassed freaking Sasha Gerstner. <laughs> wow. That's cool. Awesome. I, I love when the video, videos get up that high. It's always so a do good I. thing. Now and, rank uh, up our subs, please. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, we just need the subscriptions. Uh, yes, so 198 away from monetization for Rats Out Review and about eight. <laughs> Oh, two for me. So we'll come on, let's do this. We'll get there. We'll get there. So go over to Music is Life podcast on YouTube and go hit that subscribe button. Hit our subscribe button and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Tooth and Demoni. <laughs> Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, look no further than the Rat Sound Review Network. Rat Sound Review is taking over the podcast world with plenty of shows to choose from within their network of entertaining programming, including... The flagship show, Ratsa Review, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and Lou Mavs, as well as occasional co-hosts Manny Mejias and James Lilquist. We also have the official Ratsa Review spin-offs, such as Album vs. Album, Screams from the Grave, where we discuss beloved yet forgotten hard rock and metal albums of the past, and a King Diamond podcast called This Broadcast Belongs to Them. We've also got Old Man Metal's Musings, the Metal Thrashing Nerd podcast with Metal Thrashing Mike, the Team Otoki podcast featuring Stradivarius and Avalon Foundry, Member Timo Toki, the BS sessions with Mark and Jerry, 
Just the Cheese Please, a podcast dedicated to cheesy films of the 1980s with Tara J and Adam. And the Music is Live podcast with Lou Mavs. The Ratsaw Review Network is your go-to one-stop shop for the best podcasts out there today. Go to RatsawReview.com for more info. And to find out where you can find, follow, subscribe, and comment on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and all streaming platforms. The Ratsaw Review Network. We're taking over.